Hi guys, FM Campbell here, and welcome to a video where I'm going to be talking to you guys and giving you some uh, tips and little hints and stuff like that of how to make money on Football Manager 2015. So these are little tricks that I've picked up since playing the game, um, and obviously I've been playing previous FMs as well, which is sort of, they've rolled over, and it's the exact same tricks. Um, if you do enjoy the video, please feel free to like it. If you're new to the, to the channel, feel free to subscribe, it's completely up to you. Um, as you can see, for the sake of this video, I've taken hold of MK Dons. Um, I'm just going to get straight into the meeting, which will take us to our first little tip. So we're meeting the board. So great, let's get the meeting started. Um, familiar with the club's history. Um, don't feel the philosophy. Traditional total press conference, yeah, that's cool. Uh, that's right, I'm going to hand you over to the assistant manager. Speak to my staff when need to. Now, for some reason, they haven't spoken to me about how much... Uh, money I would like to take in the budget in regards to um, my wages and my transfer funds. Um, nine times out of ten, that does happen. To be honest with you, that has surprised me that hasn't happened. Um, Pete Winkleman should have been saying that, but apparently not. Um, so basically what would happen is they would say, are uh, based on different targets, whether it's to finish in the top ten, um, to, I don't know, to finish in the... Um, promotional places or to win the league um, each target will get a set of budgets um, your, obviously your wages and your transfer budget um, so basically it's always good to have a look at what they were offering for each target and ideally you want to take on something that you think is realistic but at the same time or is achievable sorry um, but at the same time sort of is going to suit you financially so it's just the first little tip and um, how to basically start your budgets in a way. Um, number two, essentially, is as simple as this: win trophies. You get prize money for your position in the league. You get prize money for playing in cup competitions. If you win these prizes, uh, these competitions, you win money. As simple as that. You get payouts. Um, the next thing to think about is your tickets and gate receipts obviously if you've got a bigger stadium you're going to have higher ticket and gate receipts so if you can try and achieve um, building a new stadium in the long run in the long term you are going to be making a bigger turnover which you'll probably and likely end up in profit um, a good thing for lower clubs is to get friendlies against bigger teams and um, you can get some nice payouts if you arrange for friendlies so for instance if I go into the schedule and you'll see here we've got a friendly with Aston Villa, a friendly with Tottenham. Um, both teams that you have class a lot higher standard than the MK Dons. So you'll be getting a little bit of money for that. Um, if we wanted to try and arrange a friendly, for example, we could try and arrange one. I don't know. Let's try and arrange one in the middle of these two. Wednesday, um, you'll go, obviously we want home game, 90 minutes. And the opposition, we want a large reputation team. And look, we can get Chelsea or approach Chelsea to have a friendly on that day and we're going to get an income of 140k um, so that would well sorry the board estimate they receive about around 190k um, 140k would go to them so we would get um, 140k will pay to participate in team for appearing in this friendly so yeah we get 190k revenue um, so it's a nice little way of getting a nice little payout um, depending on how big your club is, sometimes you can't get the likes of Chelsea and whatnots to come to your ground. Um, but it, it's always worth the punt. But like I said, it's, an, it's a good way of making money. Um, moving on, your shirt sales and merchandise. Now, if you bring a new player, um, basically shirt sales will increase. It's as simple as that. Um, a very, very good thing to think about is foreign players, so especially Asian players, where you can increase the fan base in Asia, and these Asian players, their shirts will be bought on the truckload. Um, not always, but if you can get a half-decent Asian player, they'll be bought on the truckload, and your merchandise and um, shirt sales can go up. Um, if you make big-name signings, say for instance you signed, a, I don't know, a 35-year-old Zlatan Ibrahimovic for Charlton, if you got promoted or something like that. Because it's a big name, it brings attraction to your club, and all of a sudden, the Zlatan Ibrahimovic merchandise would go through the roof, because he's obviously one of the biggest players in the world at the moment. And that won't just happen um, with big players that we know of now. Obviously, regens will break through and become the best players in the game, and these sort of reputation players will bring big merchandise. 
Another thing to think about is buying and selling. So you could be looking for loads of different players. Um, no, we don't know more about that for now. You'd be looking at loads of different players. Um, you should be spot looking out for bargains. If you can find someone that you think is really, really cheap, um, for example, let's just have a, a punch. Sean McDonald is obviously on the transfer list at the moment. His value is 800k. He's on the transfer list for 400k. So th this is kind of a lucky example. So you could go and buy him for 400k, and you can either play him for the year. You can have him yourself. Or you can go and plan on selling him in the future. I mean, if you pretty if, not that you would be able to, but if you wanted to sell him straight away, you're doubling your money. So it's a very, very simple way of making a lot of money if you can. Um, always plan for the long term in this, I find. So if I was to bring in Sean McDonald, maybe not for a club like Don's, but for another club, um, I'd probably loan him out for a season or two to a point where I, I, I feel that um, it's a decent amount of money that I could be selling him for. That's when I'd sell him, and you can make a good, decent profit. And one of the keys when loaning out players as well is if you loan these players out, all of their wages paid in their natural position, their value does sometimes tend to increase, and it's not costing you a penny because that club is paying for all of their wages. You're not paying a penny for it. So sometimes they'll get a new player will come in, and he'll probably be going out and loan the next, the following week. So you probably only pay him a week's wages, and then for maybe a season or maybe two. Um, usually, on average, I'd say for me personally, it's two year, it's two seasons. Um, I would then sell him at the end of that. I've not paid any money for him at all, um, obviously wages-wise. And he's loaned out. He's got experience. His value may have increased. And then you sell him on, and you could be making a half decent amount of profit. Um, talking about with a players for the moment, um, one big thing to look for on this game is signing youth players. There's a number of reasons for this. Youth players usually want a lot lower wages because they're just not as advanced in their career as some of the bigger players. And if you can get them on long-term deals, so for instance, you could get an 18-year-old on a five-year deal. So for five years, you've got them tied down on a really minimalistic contract. Yes, sometimes these players will moan, but if you've got good man management and things like that, you can... Just sort of say, shut up, mate. You've got five years left on your, on your deal or three years left on your deal. There's plenty of time. Um, it's then at the end of that five-year deal, you would then either consider selling the player or obviously extending their contract. Um, that's something to think about for yourself. I tend to sign as many youth as I can. I'd say I'll probably sign five youth players and maybe one of them have a potential possibility of joining my club as a, as a sort of a first-team player. So then other four... Um, youth players, I'll probably get them out on loan, get them uh, getting some experience, some first team experience. Their value will be constantly increasing throughout this time. Obviously, they're on a deal, and uh, the other club is being is paying 100% of their wages. Um, they're playing in their natural position or a position where I think that I want them to play in the future. Um, and when they return then to your club, what, say for instance you bought a 20 year old, as soon as they get to sort of the age of about 25, maybe 26 you could probably sell them for a nice amount of money. So it's a really good way of making money. Um, another good thing, especially in relation to the youth, is regen days. Um, one massive... Uh, there's obviously loads of different dates for the different countries and stuff. But you can go into your regens uh, on your regen days when you have a good youth intake. And say, for instance, you are MK Dons and there's a youth intake day on March the 13th or wherever it is. Um, go have a look at all the other clubs in England because they have got players on approach to signs where you only have to play normally a small compensation and you're getting this player that has great potential, not just footballing wise, but potential for your club to do a little bit of business and make a little bit of money. So really, really, really watch out on regen days. And obviously these regen days go on throughout the world. Um, so you have to be sort of vigilant and ready to go and search for these players. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time because based on your scouting um, knowledge, sometimes they don't always come up in this player search box just here. So it's so to really, really um, be vigilant about and, and just keep your eye out for when region days are. So regular check-in and things like that. But there are websites um, around that will give you dates as well um, for the different region days. So just keep an eye out for that as well. One good tip, especially um, if you want to increase your reputation, which will help out with merchandise and things like that, is if you can go um, on pre-season tours. Um, I, to my knowledge, I don't know if you can organise your, these yourself. Normally it's done down to um, people at your club that will try and arrange something like this. 
Um, I think a director of football may do it. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, so this, so you'll be doing a pre-season tour. Say, for instance, you're a, um, I don't know, uh, Aston Villa, and you could go and do a pre-season tour around Brazil. You're going to increase your reputation in Brazil, and it will increase your fan base, which increases your um, your merchandise income and things like that. And then don't forget, obviously, you'll have ticket sales whilst you're there, and and there's all sorts. And there's player experience, and there's just so much added into a preseason tour. Plus, it's, it's a preseason tour. Your players are getting fit. You're you're doing your team cohesion. You're working on your tactics and things like that. When I first signed for a club, I'll go to the squad, and I will. Go to oh, go to their contracts, and I'll put it to the top. So right here, as you can see, we've got Dean Lewington is earning the most money at the club. So I'll go to Dean Lewington, have a quick look at him, see if I like him or not. Go to his reports. Okay, my assistant manager is only thinking about three stars. Then I'd sort of think, is Dean Lewington worth a contract like that? Um, let's try and find another. Dean Lewington is captain, so that's probably why he's up in this sort of regions. So if we go and we put on assistant reports and then we insert a column of contract and we want to do contract expiry date. So there we go, 2015, uh, sorry, it's contract expiry date and then we want contract, the, we want the actual, the wage. Yeah, there we go. So there's wage. So we've got contracts on the wage. So if we stick it on the wage. Now Dean Lewington is on a five grand a week contract. He's... Uh, currently our captain obviously um, his deal expires though in a year's time he is 30 years old so I'll be looking at him and thinking right he's on quite a bit of money he's actually on the most money at the club um, his deal expires next year then I'll probably have a look at other left backs we have currently we don't have another left back at the club at all and I'll just sort of maybe analyse that a little bit and just think could I maybe sell him could I make some money on him because he's 30 years old? His value is not that great. He's only 170k. But I've got a couple of choices now of what I can do. I can either loan him out 100% wages until the end of his contract because I don't want to pay that amount of money. So I can loan him out 100% of his wages. It saves me all of his all of his contract wage completely to the end of his contract. The when he returns, he would just leave the club. And essentially, he wouldn't cost me a thing. That's trusting that the club is in, we can get clubs interested in loaning him. Um, then what you've got to think about is, can I make some money on him? Could I sell him for, he's worth 170k, could I sell him for 200k, maybe 300k? Is that a possibility? With these mental stats, it's never, a, you can, it's, it's always a good chance. Um, then you think, can I find replacements for him at left back? Are they going to cost me more money than what he is? Um, nine times out of ten, if someone in this sort of region, if you're sort of really debating it, um, I would tend to try and make some money on him as much as possible. Um, if it comes to a point though where none of these sort of tactics are working, none of these little tricks are working, um, you'll see here if I go and offer um, to Dean Lewington to release his contract, it's going to cost me 250 grand in compensation. This is the last resort. Um, to be honest with you, I, what I could personally advise is to avoid um, cutting contracts, avoid terminating contracts as much as you can because it does cost quite a lot of money and I was a bit of a fool to this on previous FMs and made quite a lot of mistakes uh, the best thing to do is to try and get these players loaned out 100% of their wages being paid um, to the end of their contracts or until you, you feel that you've got a good value where you can make a little bit of money on them so I could pay Dean Lewington in this example 250 grand in compensation to cut his contract to terminate it straight up without him having to say so or I could go and offer him a mutual termination, and I'll do that for the example of this episode, and he's unwilling to terminate. But nine times out of ten, you'll find players. So let's find one. Obviously, his contract, he's a, a captain. So let's try and find someone. We'll go in the under-18s, for example. So we've got this guy here. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that name. Um, so we'll uh, release on a free. It's going to cost me four grand. So if I then go to that and I go... Um, this is not let me. There's no mutual termination, and that that's very very strange. Uh, maybe because he's on a youth contract. Um, so let's go to the under 21s. Here we go, Will Summerfield. Let's try this guy. Right. So yeah. So if we were to release him on a free, it's going to cost us 41 and a half grand. Um, then if we did a mutual termination, so let's offer him. Let's see what he says. Um, 
the board's now blocked that one, so this is a, uh, another rubbish example. Basically, there's not a lot, of, not a lot of money at MK Don, so they probably not turn that down. Just to sum up, the when you're offering a mutual termination, it is usually about half, roughly, of what it would cost you to terminate the contract outright. So if you offered a mutual termination and the other player agreed to it, they it may be a case that they will take a smaller amount because they're happy to leave the club because they feel unwanted, they feel like you want to get rid of them and they want to find a new club themselves, they will take a smaller amount. So it's a very, very good tip. But like I said, in all situations, you want to avoid terminating contracts. Just get them out on loan 100% of the wages until you can get rid of them. Next thing to look at, um, staying with contracts, I guess, um, Samir Karuthas, for example, he's 21 years old, is on four grand a week, um, is worth 800k. What I tend to think is, do these players deserve these sorts of contracts? So we've got a guy here who's our what one, two, three, fourth highest paid player, and he's probably one of the poorest players in our team, Danny Green. He's 25 years old. His mental stats are rubbish. Personally, I don't think he warrants a three and a half grand a week contract. Um, his value is 450k, so he could be a half decent money maker. So I would go and I would offer this player out for about a million pound. I know it's over double, but we would do that offer and over a million pound. Now, clubs would probably say no, that's too expensive. That's fine, but there might be an off chance where a club goes, do you know what? We'll negotiate a sort of price around that. We've put we've put the offer to clubs at negotiable. They may come back with an offer at about six hundred k. You now know that they they were interested in this player and they're willing to spend. So if you can try and agree a deal between the six hundred k and the million pound mark, so you're probably looking at about the seven fifty maybe eight hundred k mark. Um, it's easy it's easy pickings. You're getting a decent amount of money for a player that you don't want, who's not very good, and he's on a lot of money wages wise. So I mean. If you cut out Danny Green's um, contract, so it's 3,500 per week. So if we did that, 3,500 per week, times that by four, and then times that by 12, which is the year, you're saving yourself 168 grand for the season just on that one player leaving. That's that's just on his wages. So to add that to your, what, 650, 700K, um, around, well, it, it, around that mark, you're talking not nearly up to sort of touching a million pound. So it's a very, very simple way of making money. Um, moving on and staying in the same sort of aspect, what I will then do is I will look at the player values. Now I'll go to my general info, I'll put their value up. Now we have Delhi Ali in here, 18 years old, he's a bit of a wonder kid for the team, but his value is 2.8 million. So, I mean, realistically, realistically you've got to be careful because obviously he's 18 years old, so he is probably one of the better players in our team. Our assistant manager thinks he's probably going to be the best player in our team. So this is what you've got to think about. Then we've got Ben Reeves, he's 925k. Um, he's four and a half, three and a half star, four and a half star potential. Um, Will Grigg is currently on loan. Um, this guy, you've got to think, am I paying him too much money? No, you are not. You've got a half decent player and you're only paying him 1,100 a week, which is really, really good. Samir Karufas, 800k. This is the guy that we looked at earlier. He's 21 years old, so he's relatively young. He's got a bright future ahead of him. Um, so we'll look at his report, and again, your club thinks he's going to be doing really well. So when you're looking at it like this, I will then go back to your assistant reports, and this time I will add um, your general, and then where's his value in here? No, is it contracts then? Might be, might be, or transfer. There we go, transfer. So we go to value. So there we go. So we've got a player... Again, we're getting to Danny Green. He's got a half decent value. Not very good player. Might as well cash in on him. And something a really good thing to look at this as well is when they're old, you'll get players. Um, for instance, like uh, we have Anthony K here, ninety grand. It's probably not worth it money wise. Then you have the D Darren Potter here. He's twenty nine years old. Although he looks like a half decent player, he's twenty nine years old. His value is 450k. You could probably get about 500 to 600k, maybe if you're lucky for him. So you might as well cash in on him because he's hitting an age now where his stats are only going to start to decrease. His value will only start to de deteriorate. So you might as well try and cash in whilst you can. Now another thing to think about, um, moving away from the players, you'll go to your squad, and 
what you want to be looking for is your affiliates. Um, so let's go to home. Where are my affiliates? Team meeting, what we've got international, no players. Where the hell are our affiliates? Board? Nope. So yeah, you want you want to look for your affiliated club basically. So let's just I'm trying to remember where it but it is now. Um it might be in Where on earth are your affiliated clubs? Yeah, so basically you might have some um feeder clubs or parent clubs. Now if you can get parent clubs it's actually a really, really good idea because here's affiliates. So if you go, obviously at the minute Don's has no affiliate, affiliated clubs. But if we go to, for instance, um, let's go to my team, Man United. So let's go to these guys. Um, have they got their affiliates in this list? Overview, affiliated clubs. Right, so you'll see these teams here. This is at Man United. So they have four affiliated clubs. These are all feeder clubs. Now, in this example, Don's would probably be a feeder club um, to another team. We would probably have a parent club. Now, what you'll see is some of these, not in this case, none of them have anything, but some of these have an annual fee. Now, if you can get an annual fee from a club, it's, just, it's, it's, it's confirmed income. Sometimes it could be 150 grand a year. That's fine. You're confirming income, plus you get first dibs on loaning players from them, so you can get some players for pretty cheap on loan. And they can help out your club, obviously. And obviously, if you get a bigger club like Man United, for example, you could be loaning um, sort of top-class players, if you can, um, from them for reasonably cheap. And this is also during a time whilst they're paying you an annual fee. Um, if you can get feeder clubs in other countries, it can help your reputation. And it also saves you money by swapping unwanted and unneeded players to feeder clubs as well. So if you, for instance, have, have got a, a player that you can't release on loan, uh, you, you don't want to mutually terminate their contract or something like that, but you want them playing first team football to gain experience and to gain value, you can send them to one of your feeder clubs to start playing regularly. Um, sometimes the player will disagree to go there, but sometimes they won't. Nine times out of ten, they will go there, and you can get them increasing their value, increasing their experience, and it's actually a really beneficial thing for all their players. Um, but yeah, the annual fees are the biggest thing, especially if you're a smaller club. So say, for instance, you're maybe a Vanarama club and you can get a, a parent club that's in, I don't know, Germany, maybe in the second division or first division. They're going to be paying you an annual fee. You get first dibs on their players for loans and things like that. So it's actually really, really effective. One of the biggest things, and this works hand in hand with performance, and it works hand in hand with winning trophies and popularity, is TV revenue. Um, I know, for for example, in a Champions League game to be on the telly, I think you get about 800k or something like that, just to be just for, to to play the game. Um, obviously, lower down and in other competitions, if you can break TV, then really that's really really good because, like I said, you do get TV revenue where the, obviously TV providers are having to pay to play, to what to to play your your game on their TV station. Um, so if we go to the schedule, nine times out of ten, it will say in here. Um, so let's cancel the friendly thing. Yeah, that's fine. And you'll get a TV um, sort of notification in here. So if we again go to Man United and we go to their schedule, um, have they got anything scheduled for TV? Yeah. So here we go. Here, look. So they've got a, a friendly already scheduled to be on TV. So they're going to get a, a, a little bit of money for that, a little bit of income. So if you can sort of start to do well in tournaments, if you can start to do well in your league, um, if you can gain a, a sort of a match against a big team, these these games, nine times out of ten, especially against a big team in a friendly, which always helps, nine times out of ten will go on TV and you will get a small sum for that. Um, working alongside that as well and TV revenue, if you um, perform well, um, if you sign big name players, if you increase your reputation around the world and things like that, you can gain good sponsorship deals. Now sponsorship deals are great money for the club. I mean we'll look at for example um, Man United on this, let's, let's see if they got, where is the players... I'm guessing they won't show, will it show me their finances? 
don't know if it will show me their finances facilities something's telling me it doesn't staff transfers history no that's fine so we'll go to our own and um, these are our sponsorships in here look so we've got a two year main kit sponsor of 75k per season which ends in 2016 so this is actually quite a good one because most of our sponsors end in um, two or three years um, so we've got two years one year one year two so not even three years so it's two one or two years um, so you'll be gaining new sponsors so if you can be successful with a club like MK Dons for example you'll move forward and you can move up, the, up maybe up the league you can possibly be um, promoted um, you'll gain higher um, reputation and which basically gets you potentially higher income via sponsors so that's always always helpful then one of the biggest things on this game is free transfers now if you go to your scouting and you go to um, obviously your player search here you can do a quick, quick search you do contract status is expired so it'll bring up to your scouters scouting knowledge all these players are expired so for instance if I want to find a striker I'll go into this and I want position um, you can filter it by age as well if you want so can play striker naturally I know most strikers finishing is their key attribute so here we go that we have Ivan Kalasnic he's available on a free yes he's 34 years old if I wanted to approach to sign him um, you can kind of get an idea so he's only going to cost you he wants two grand um, you can offer him 1.6 let's maybe see if he wants that we'll only give him a year deal and we'll suggest a term so he's now negotiating so we'll suggest the terms again he's agreed to the 1.6 million deal and you've just made a transfer that's costing you absolutely nothing now so that's a way of saving money in income wise now if you wanted to you could go and you could add age and you could find someone at the top of age of 27 let's knock it down to 26 so we have strikers down in here look and then we go to let's look at this guy Juan Agudelo 21 years old doesn't look too bad considering the level that we are we could possibly scout him uh, we could send one of us out so Bobby Winkleman will go out um, to scout him we can find out maybe if you want to to see how much he's roughly going to cost so we could approach to sign him so he's, he's wanting a little bit maybe too much money but let's just see what the, the scout comes back with because that guy could then sign for you um, you could play him for the season or loan him out possibly and then in a season or two's time trust and obviously if you loan him out you want to pay 100% of his wages in his key position in his most natural position um, you can loan him out and then he'll return and then you can sell him or his attributes may have increased anything like that and it's a simple way of making money um, for example when I was Man United and you can check that, this out on my Man United save, save if you want to. This guy here, Dennis Stracolersi, is available on a free at the beginning. Yes, he's going to cost quite a bit of money. I doubt he'll speak to Dons. Um, no, he won't. Oh, just go back forward. No, he won't. But he looks like a pretty good striker. He's only 26. So I signed him up on a free. Didn't cost me a penny. He was on about 15 grand a week, I think. 10 to 15 grand a week. And then he returned from loan. And then we sold him for 10 million pounds. That's £10 million that you've just made. Um, he's never played for my club. He's I've never paid him more than a week's wages because I loaned him out straight away. Um, they were paying 100% of his wages. He was playing up front. And then he returned to my club and I sold him. I offered him to clubs for £15 million or something like that. I think his value was about £7 million. And then we met in the middle and I sold him for £10 million. And that's straight into your bank, straight for you to go and spend in all sorts of areas of the club. Um, next thing to think about is loaning players out. Now, I know I've mentioned this quite a few times already, but I'm going to quickly go over it uh, just to sort of sum up. So, this is for players that you believe upon possibly, well, it, it could be for any player. Nine times out of ten, it's, believe, it's for a player that you, you don't want to sell right now because his value may not be high enough, in your opinion, for a sort of a, a sum that you want to be, say, for instance, you want to be making about 10 million for a player. Well, at the minute, his value is 2.5, but he's 23 years old. He's got a little bit of potential. Maybe you want to loan him out for a season or two. Make sure the club's paying all of his wages, as I've said millions of times. Um, play him in the position that you actually want to play him. Then he will return to your club after his loan spell. 
then you can either sell him, trusting that his value's gone up and you're happy with his value, or you can keep him for your club. Now, this is good for when you have players ahead of him in this in your team already. Say, for instance, you have a left midfielder. You have two left midfielders that are better than him that you have two choices from. So you want to loan him out because eventually this guy that's 23 years old will come back and he could be better than the ones that you currently have. So that then allows you to either sell one of the ones you currently have and try and make some money that way, or you can decide, no, I want to keep the ones I have. I want to loan this guy out again to try and increase his value even more. Um, which is it gets riskier as they get older because sometimes their value can freeze or drop. Um, I had that experience with Marion Fellaini when I first took him. It was 16 million, and then after two seasons, his value had dropped to 9 million. So you can sometimes lose out with this, but nine times out of ten, sort of up to the age of about 26, you can make a little bit of money on these sorts of players. Um, but the main thing is you're saving money on wages. So if I went and loaned someone out, like I said earlier on, that was on five grand. You're saving yourself 168 grand a year, so it's a it's a decent bit of money that you can put somewhere else. And then when you go and loan 20 to maybe 30 players, depending on how many you got at your club, that are all on five grand. I mean, you do the maths. What's 168 grand times 30 people times times 30? So you could be saving yourself quite a lot of money a year um, via this route. But yeah, it can increase their value as well while they're gone, which will help when they come back and you can sell them. It'll also um, increase their reputation if you can get them abroad. Um, or potentially, it, you could keep them in this country and clubs may keep them in this country and decide, you know what, we still like him. Can we have him off full time? Can we, can we do the full purchase? So one thing that I tend to do is I'll look at players and I think, do you know what? He is never going to be part of my future plans. And if that guy is never going to be part of my future plans, I will loan him out till the sun goes down. And then eventually when I'm happy, I will sell him. Um, I, I reckon I would say 75% of the players that I sign on FM is to make money. I'm all about trying to make money. It's so important because then you can go and splash um, a big sum on a big player that you can go up front and you can pay all his wages because you've managed to build this team and build some sort of stopgap players maybe on the way as well. So it is loaning players, I think, is a massive part of this game. Um, what else have I got here? Yeah, so make sure they're 100% wages. Make sure they're playing in the natural position or a position that you want to play in. Um, also make sure that when you're loaning these players out, they are loaned out as a key player or minimum of a first team regular. You need to make sure these players are playing, otherwise they may as well be playing for your club because they're not getting any benefit from training and playing at, your, at the other club because they're not playing, it's simple as that. And this is the, one of the main reasons why you want to loan out these players is because they're not playing for you. It's that simple. So make sure they're a key player or minimum of a first team regular. You don't want to be someone that's cover, you don't want to be someone that's back up, you don't want to be someone that's rotation and things like that. You want them to be playing week in, week out. Um, another little trick that I found, if you can't sell or loan out a player and they're just sat at your club and you don't want to um, terminate their contract or their board's blocking you terminating their, your contract, like MK Dons did with a couple of examples a second ago, one little trick that I found to do is say, for instance, there's a player, um, a striker that you want. Say I wanted to go and buy um, Will Keane from Man United, who's a striker, a young English striker, and I want to bring him to the MK Dons. Now, what is a really good thing to do is if you go, okay, I'll give you, say, for instance, they want 2.5 million for Will Keane. You go, okay, no, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 1.5 million and this player that won't leave. So this is where the player that won't leave, that you can't loan out, you can't sell, you don't want to terminate his contract, add him to the transfer deal. It's always a bonus. I mean, sometimes the other opposite club will say, no, we don't want the player, um, we want the money. Okay, fine, if you if you feel that you, you want this player enough, if you want Will Keane enough to go and cough up the 2.5 million, you say, fine, okay, 2.5 million, but you're still taking this player. And I can guarantee you that player will want to sign because you've been offering them out for loans, offering them out for for um, uh, for uh, for transfer and things like that. If you just add him on, uh, you just got to take the hit. It's, it, you're giving him away for free, um, so 
I mean, but it's a simple way. I mean, there's actually been a deal once that I've done before, before I started this YouTube channel, where I had four players um, involved in a deal. Um, it would have cost me the same amount of money anyway for the deal. I can't remember who it was I was buying. But I was buying someone for about 20 million, and I had four players that I couldn't get rid of. So I, I said, right, okay, now I'll tell you what, they're all rubbish. I said, right, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 18 million in these four players. And they went, nope, we want 20 million. So I went, okay, well, it's 20 million, but you're still taking these four players. It gets these four players off your wage bill, so it saves you money. Um, and then going forward, obviously, it's, this is the long term you've got to think about in these sort of situations. Um, another little trick as well when you're selling a player um, is to make them unwanted, to make their, their status as unwanted. So if we go to the squad here now, for example, and we go to Carl Baker, you'll do their transfer status. You do the squad status, not needed, not needed, same as unwanted, and the transfer status is on. So you'll be basically doing this. They might moan, but just tell them to shut up. If you want them to go out on loan as well, you can do available for loan. And then what you do is you confirm that, and then was it? Yeah. And then what you do is you put this guy in the under twenty one squad, like so. So he's now in the under twenty ones. Carl Baker. So now he might feel a little bit annoyed and think, oh. Why have I been dropped to the under 21s? Why am I unwanted? Um, why am I transfer listed? And this guy may become unhappy. But clubs are massively put off on this game. That you don't, people don't tend to notice this enough. Um, clubs are put off if they don't feel a player will want to leave. So I've signed players before on a free or um, something like that, and then they have joined me, and I've often went on loan the next day because I want to get them out as quick as possible to save myself some money because I don't feel this player is going to be playing in my first team just yet, or even at all. So I'll be offering him out alone, and clubs will be like, oh no, we don't feel he want to join us. So he'll be like, okay, well I'm going to force him out. Let's force him out alone. Let's put him in the reserves. And he'll, his morale might drop, and he might think, do you know what, I need to leave here to get first team football, or to get constant football, or to start consistently. Stuff like that. So that's when a player will leave, and I find that's a really, really big trick. Um, it's sometimes worth just doing it, send, offering him out, uh, put him on the transfer list for a week, then offer him out on loan again, then it might be accepted. Then as soon as they join that club on loan, um, you retract your transfer listed um, sort of instruction, and then they're no longer on the transfer list, but they're out on loan and their wages are being paid. Another big thing on this game, uh, and all FMs obviously, is the Bosman, which is when it comes to the end of the season, um, you may have players that are out of contract. So if we go to the um, scouting again, and their contract status, they're expiring in a year's time. So there's players here now worth 425k. Look, this guy, Luke Williams, he's 21 years old. He's a striker. He's got a lot, quite a little bit of potential. You need to be scouting these players and make sure they're suitable or make sure you're happy to take them on. But that guy there, his contract expires in a year time. So I'll scout him, and then when it comes to the end of December, um, Obviously put these on your shortlist because you'll get a notification in your news items saying in your inbox saying that um, there are players that are, set, uh, that, that are set to have contracts expire at the end of the season. And if trusting that these players aren't in your country, um, so for instance you're in England, you can't approach players in England, you have to wait to the end of the season and pray that, you, that they haven't signed a new deal and you can... Um, Make them want to leave their clubs by sort of declaring interest on them. So you can go and declare interest for transfer. And then talk to the press. So we'll do that now with this guy. And you can sort of every now and then throughout the season, you can go and do this. Passionately speak, I would love to sign him. I really want this guy. And this guy might be going, do you know what? I'd love to join MK Dons. I would love to join him. This Luke Williams guy. And he may then not sign a contract. You may put him off and you may want him to leave. Keep in mind that his morale might be poor as well, so this is what you've got to think about. But then, in another example, if there's a guy in Spain, so let's go back to our player search, and there's a guy that is, um, let's, we want to find, no, I don't want any of that, preferred move, no, we want, is it current? I'm sure there was a, uh, a search filter where you could select them to where they currently are playing 
I might have got past. Let's just go. We'll go nationality for a, for a second, and we'll go for let's go for Spanish. So, Pacquiao Sayez, here we go. This guy plays for Gosport. Now you could possibly approach to sign him come December, and he will. Well, let's untick that strike because that's probably Mark Deval. Here we go. Plays no, he plays for Doncaster, so he's based in England, so you can't sign him. Javi Rodriguez, he's based in o uh, Oxford. And they're all bloody at Oxford by the looks of it. Um, let's, let's just stick with this guy, Paco Sayers. So, uh, obviously, I wouldn't go for a type of this player because he's not good enough. But you can go and scout and you can go and look for players that are good enough um, or are potential money makers. And you can then approach to sign these, come on the Bosman, and they will join you at the end of the season on a free. But you need to do this very, very quickly when it comes to December because other clubs do also approach um, especially better players. Um, so, yeah, that's um, pretty much the Bosman. But one of the biggest things, I've already covered it vaguely, is you have to buy and sell. You have to develop players. This is ways to make money. Then you can go to your board. This is a final example. And say, for instance, you have a budget of £28. You can go, OK, well, that's not enough. And you can just simply adjust your budget. And there you go, you have 92 grand. Although you don't have a lot of money on wages, you've probably got you got two grand available a week on wages. Um, but you can adjust that to help you out financially in any sort of way. Um, staff is another key one. Um, you can have staff that aren't very good or aren't good enough. For example, we have an under-18s coach here who can't coach to save his life, although he's good at working with youngsters. Then you think, okay, £180 a week. Can you get a, sta a member of staff even less wages than that and then you can obviously um, so this is an example of the contract 20,500 uh, 20, in compensation or you can offer a mutual termination this is good to do it at the beginning of the season and you can agree to it 10 grand so you're saving a lot of money it would cost me 10 grand to terminate this guy's contract rather than doing a straight termination so that's a very very vital thing so if you think, can then go and find another staff member that's earning less than this guy then you've got better staff and it's just going forward, it's brilliant. Another thing is, it's one of these things where you have to put money in to get money. So you can go and speak to your board, make a board request, and you can speak about expanding your stadium. Yes, it will cost you money to expand your stadium at the beginning, but in the long run, you can increase your money on gate receipts. You can increase your money um, with all sorts of things like that. Um, then we've got you can improve your training facilities. Your players will then get better quicker. They will get hit better levels than what they currently what they currently um, hitting. So that will then increase their value, increase their experience. They'll play better if they go out on loan. Then when they come back to you, you can make more money on them, things like that. Um, again, it's exactly the same with the youth facilities. Um, the finances you can increase the junior coaching budget, and you can increase. Um, so this is uh, your like youth development. So this works a little bit hand in hand with um, bringing youth players on your region days into the club, and also the youth facilities as well. So this is mainly your coaching. So you can, it's, it's, this is so it's one of these things where you have to put money to get money. You can also cut back. So youth recruitment here. So this is where your region days come in. You can cut back on your recruitment. So although you players, the standard of the players may not be as high, um, but your finances will be saved. Um, I tend to not cut back on it and hope that I get good new regens come in and then see what I can do with them financially in the future. Staff, you can increase co coaches' wages if you want to um, more staff in at your club, or, or if there's a better staff member that wants a little bit too much money. And then obviously going forward, players are going to get better. They're getting better coaching. The values might increase. Things like that. Um, personal right contract. This is a really really valid point. Your personal contract, um, you can there's it, it, there's two ways about it. You can either ask, say for instance you're offered a hundred grand a week contract, you could turn around to them and say no, I only want twenty grand. It's saving your club eighty grand a week, which is brilliant because you can do the maths and times that by four and then by twelve to make the year how much you're saving. But the only downside to it is if the club wanted to sack you, it is not going to cost them a lot of money in fees. Um, obviously, you're not going to mutually terminate, but you can um, 
they can terminate your contract and they won't cost them very much so it might be easy to terminate your contract um, you can find out about this if you go to your um, I think it's your board and you go to your confidence it could be your job status which is here um, and you can click on your details and here you go since it would not cost a great deal of money to terminate the manager's contract early he lacks great job security on this front so if you want great job security ask for the biggest contract that you can um, but it is going to cost money um, so what else we've got in the board request so yes yeah, staff we've mentioned networking we've mentioned oh scouting if you send you got you can obviously set up assignments if you send um, scouts out on assignments so if we create the new assignment right now and we sent him to find a hot prospect striker um, a target man we go forward and we want him potential ability to be five star and we start the assignment that is going to cost us money um, this is what you have to be careful of because all of these assignments cost money you need to monitor all of these in your finances and your ingoings and outgoings so we go to expenditure and you can see scouting costs so it's going to cost us £1,160 this month so far so that's that could increase uh, however many assignments you do so you need to be monitoring these um, all the time another one when authoring player, a player a contract so if we go to our scouting and we go expired um, not too worried about that let's go striker and we go to finishing and we offer Jamal Branca a contract if he has an agent which he doesn't um, you need to be careful with these fees because it comes out your transfer budget as well and then you've got a signing on fee as well sometimes you'll get players that have a big signing on fee and a big agent fee so keep an eye out for when players have no agent because it's going to save you an awful lot of money here um, obviously you want to be saving and bringing down these and negotiating and all sorts of stuff so contracts when offering them um, is quite a big point as well because it's going to cost you quite a bit of money if you're not too careful um, but yeah I think that's pretty much it like I said there's obviously different things that you need to be careful with here um, a bigger the stadium so if you keep increasing your, your stadium um, capacity and things like that it's going to cost more to maintain it um, and, and going forward uh, and, and all sorts of things basically um, but yeah you just got to be careful um, travel costs so you might do a pre-season tour but it may be in Australia so it's going to cost you probably the most amount of money traveling all the way there traveling all the way back but you just got to kind of counteract it with okay yeah but it might increase my population in Australia I might get some Australian fans so you just got to be careful you just got to, I'm, I'm constantly in here to monitor where I'm spending money how, what, whenever I'm spending too much money so yeah and then you just sort of compare that to your income so you've got your expenditure your income then you've got your projection so at the minute the club think I'm going to lose money so this is where you have to start being careful with your money then financial fair play can come into it you have to be careful with as well so here's your financial fair play summary so for Don's the current player wage total is obviously there the maximum player wage total is that much um, current player wage total is um, so the surplus so this is the deficit which is there and then obviously the period of the end date is in the lump. So you just have to be careful with that as well. But yeah, salaries are huge. So if you can find good players that are young, that are going to hit good prospects for cheaper wages than some of maybe your older players, then try and get rid of the older players, try and make some money on them, and then try and get young players in on low wages and build your club. This is very much, finances very much build your club. Everything that you're doing is having an input into building your club. Um, so that's it. That's pretty much all I can think of. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If there are some players that you think that you can buy cheap in the game, or if there are players that you've bought cheap in the game, get them in the comment section below. Let's help out some other guys. Um, obviously, there's a couple of guys that you can sign on free transfers that, you, that you're that you aware of, that, you, that their value becomes quite big. For example, like my Dennis Stratkolersi when he signed for United, and we made about £10 million on him. Signed him on a free, never paid him any wages, and then sold him for £10 million a season later. So if there's any players like that that you've ever had um, success with, get them in the comment section below. If there's other ways of making money that I haven't mentioned, that um, I've forgotten about or, or I don't know about, my, I tell myself, get them in the comment section below. This is quite a good episode to be getting some um, interaction going between myself and you guys, and you guys between yourselves as well. Um, 
so yeah, this is one of these videos that I get quite requested for. How have I done that? How have I managed to sell players for this much money? Um, and it's all about experience in the game. It's all about getting them uh, their popularity up, their awareness of the clubs aware of these players. It's just such a vital part of the game finances, and you can get into trouble very very quickly if you're not careful. But yeah, I hope this helped. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to leave a like if you have. Remember to subscribe if you're new. But like I said, it's completely up to you. But anyway, I'll see you guys soon in the next video. Take care. Cheers.